Do you understand what I need need from you, Lance? I'm going to oh. show you how to. That's Willa Ford. Willa, oh. Willa, Willa, what you want. Which, by the way, I really, when we met her, I wanted to go up to her and go, Willa, 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 what you want, what you want. But I thought that was just the remix, and maybe she didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. And then on my Instagram <laughs> page, when I posted that, this other Insta gay that I have on my Instagram was like, Willa, 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 what you want. And I was like, so it is like a known thing. It's not just some <laughs> weird remix I heard of. So I should have done it. Maybe she should have liked me better. It's fine. I think she liked you just fine. Yeah, I was going to say, it's just, she was like all about you. I know. Mm-hmm. Blondes and gays. Mm-hmm. Peanut butter and jelly. There you go. This will be our third installment of Goonjoon. And today is our lovely Cam. It's Cam's pick. We Ooh. reached out to her. Ooh, she is, yeah, she's been a Patreon member for years and years. And she's always been very, you know, close. She always participates on our posts and things. She does do the fitness challenges with us as well. You know, she's yeah. very prevalent with the with the mutant goons from beyond. And so, Cam, we just want to say, give a big shout out to you and, and thank you so much for your support. An unfortunate piece of news is that we have lost a member of the horror community today. The actor mm-hmm. from Friday the 13th part, the fi- was it the final? I think it's the final. Don't yeah, so I actually it. have that article right here. The final um, chapter, which is not the final chapter, but yes. Yeah. The, yeah, the first final chapter. Uh, <laughs> Eric Anderson has sadly passed away. So, Mr. Anderson, thank you for participating in one of my favorite series. We will see you soon in the Rainbow Above the Bridge, or whatever they say. Um, <laughs> I think that's for animals, but still, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so very sad, but he was a cutie patootie in Friday the 13th. So, just giving him a little love, a little shout out today. Uh, like most of the Friday the 13th actors and actresses, he pretty much did just a lot of TV afterwards. Um, he was on an episode of Monk, which just so Ooh. happens to star Tony Shalhoub, <laughs> which also happens to star in... Uh, and 13 <laughs> goes. So, <laughs> we... so without further ado, I guess we'll get started then. Yeah. Nope. All right. And thankfully, we have not done today's... Um choice which is 13 ghosts so starring Mm -hmm. tony shalhoub thank you Mm -hmm. and and obviously this is the remake of 13 ghosts that was that aired um or premiered in 1960 starring vincent price but of course there are a lot of differences between this one and the original right the 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 old one had i thought you that isn't that that, that, a haunted hill House on Haunted Hill. 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 Just kidding. House on Haunted Hill had Vincent Price. Um, But it does have someone very notable in it, the original 13 Ghost, and that is the actress who plays the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh, yeah. Mm. I didn't know that. That's actually Mm -hmm. helpful. The film stars uh, Tony Shalhoub. We have M. Beth Davids, who is uh, Miss Honey. (laughs) <laughs> right and matilda <laughs> she's miss also honey. in miss honey she's the teacher oh and matilda. that's who she is the... yes oh. the the chick the you know the chick with the short squiggly early 2000s hair and the leather pants yes her the one with the <laughs> splitting headache <laughs> oh. so um we also that's have so matthew, matthew lillard shannon elizabeth alec roberts jara bourne um, Rod Digga and F. Murray Abraham as the prolific Cyrus Criticos, the the man who started mm-hmm. it all, I guess, in this film. So whatever. Yay. When I first seen it, I was expecting it to be more of like a like a haunted house, like not so futuristic. Like the whole glass building no. and the spells and the glasses, which by the way, the glasses is one of the few things that carry on from the old film because you needed to put on special glasses to see the ghosts in 1960 version and i guess some of the ghost stories are based on loosely based or inspired by true stories but you know this is not a true story people this is based on a book so don't get excited um i think i think it does say when they were first advertising it does say based on true events or something 
I thought in your notes it actually says something that loosely based on the victims of real life Cleveland Tarso murders. The Cleveland Torso Torso. torso. Oh, whatever, yeah. Lance isn't yeah. wearing his glasses. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> Warden, where's your loo- spectacles, Lance? Loosely <laughs> based. Loosely My based. My monocle. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's is that your gator land token <laughs> yeah it is a gator land. Like, that's a gator land token mm, <laughs> oh he misses oh, me memory it is it's the Only token to gator Mikey. land and my heart <laughs> oh i know <laughs> it only cost you five dollars <laughs> yeah. <thank you. laughs> well, no, because I was looking, I was sitting at my counter the other day, and I go, "What the fuck is this?" So I need to throw this out. I'm like, "Oh no, it's the Gatorland coin." <laughs> First um, thing Aid thinks about, let me throw it away. <laughs> I wasn't even there during the whole debacle with the machine, so it was I'm our sorry. blood oath. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. It was, it was just me and Mikey sitting there like this. He goes, "I think you just get it. You, you just get one." He goes, "Yeah, it won't give me my change back." And we're like, "Oh." Yeah. Well, I guess we're getting all of them. <laughs> well, oh well. Speaking yeah. of the torso, it's torso, mm. not tarso. The yeah. torso. The effects were achieved using a double amputee wearing a special black hood that could be used to digitally remove their head. So that's pretty cool. What? I mean, hey, it's just kind of offensive. <laughs> yeah, I was like, is it? Oh no, how about this? Is that? Do you feel that's? slightly kind of how it was for uh what was the movie we saw where they actually got uh uh carny people and people who actually had ailments and stuff like that oh, like the apartment one yeah uh, uh 70s the one the, the, the sentinel the yeah. sentinel do you feel like that i mean because at that time we were talking about that we were kind of like oh is that messed up that you're actually <laughs> getting somebody well, or is this an opportunity for them to work it's if yeah they want to be I, an actor it's our the first you know inklings of inclusivity in Hollywood, right? Not just exploiting these people. Like I think the Sentinel, the Sentinel kind of exploits them in the background. But I don't think this, these people are being exploited. Like, why not have an actor do it? Like, yeah. why create something when you have somebody do it? So this is like thirteen ghost lore. Basically, the torso um, was a gambler in the early 1900s who caught the attention of the mafia. After he lost a boxing bet and didn't have the money to pay up, the mafia cut him into pieces. And wrapped him in cellophane, dumping the remains in the ocean. Oh, so it is actually uh, that. Which no, that's the story of the ghost. But I'm I'm sure the mafia did things like that. So I'm sure they've done it a couple of times. <laughs> we were talking about the mafia earlier. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, <laughs> the torso is creepy. But we have the firstborn son, uh, played by Mikhail Spadel. Uh, Billy Michaels was a young boy who loved pretending to be a cowboy. One day, another little kid challenged him to a duel. But Billy's cap gun was no match for the boy's real steel-tipped arrow that Billy's ghost still carries. And like most of the ghosts, this one is a mild threat, never attacking anyone and just saying, I want to play. So he's a little boy dressed as the Native American. No, he was a cowboy. Was he a cowboy? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because he I, got shot in the head. Buddy. He got shot in the head with the arrow. Okay. I love how it says "kept the arrow." It's like you mean in his head? Yeah, <laughs> the arrow sticking out of his head. So that might be jarring. And I know. And the funny thing is, is it's so interesting because you never see. I mean, you see it in old movies. You see it in rabbit grannies, where you, a lot of the times nowadays, when you're watching anything horror related, if a child dies, they cut away. Mm. What did did I just watch something recently where the kid died and I was like shocked by it? Uh, probably I mean, terrifier is about to have that happen in a second soon. Probably terrifier, but no, um, the uh, the Spanish one, the the devil's backbone, evil lies. No, where evil lies? No, evil. Oh, when evil lurks, that's right. When it gets the little one. girl. Oh my god. Okay. So well, not even I that. Think... When she's eating their son's brain while down the street. Spoiler alert. I, I was gonna say. I was like, <laughs> whoops. Sorry, y'all. Well, you know. <laughs> You've it, had a couple months by now. Listen, <laughs> I, I screamed. That was probably the most shocking thing I've seen in a film all year. I literally screamed out loud. And I was just like, my mouth was hanging open the entire time. But, you know, <laughs> whatever. Well, so we already went over the... Shut up. I know. Oh, my God, Mikey. <laughs> Back to the ghosts. We also have the bound woman played by Laura Minnell and Susan Legro was the richest girl in town. It was very popular in school. Her one flaw was the way she flirted and toyed with boys and men, leaving a long trail of broken hearts 
During her senior prom night, Chet Walters, a star quarterback, <laughs> caught Susan cheating on him with another boy. Doesn't this feel like Mary Lou? You're talking about me? Oh, never mind. Oh, no. <laughs> Mary Lou in prom night too. Um, the next day, the boy was found beaten to death and Susan had gone missing. Susan was found dead two weeks later, buried beneath the 50-yard line of the high school's football field. The ghost lures Bobby into the dangerous basement and still shows in her prom attire bound ropes holding her arms. So the next we have the withered lover played by Catherine Anderson. Um, but that one's sort of a, uh, a spoiler. Um, we have the torn prince played by Craig Alenic and Roy so it's about Royce Clayton who was gifted and famous teenage baseball player in the 50s who caught the eye of colleges around the USA. He died in a drag race. Oh my God, does that remind you of somebody? They made him test in drag? <laughs> yeah, he died in Happy Pride. He died Mama. in the drag. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> the Angry Princess, played by Shonda Lawyer, um, who is my favorite, obviously. She's behind me, so if you're watching the YouTube video, you can see that my my little animation likeness of me is based on her her appearance i mean obviously i don't have her boobs i wish i did but you know there's that anyways um i I'm know sure i could not real either i could Those gotta implants save, are ghosts gotta save my money for that um <laughs> so dana newman was a beautiful but abused lady who lived in the late 20th century she had plastic surgeries to alter perceived flaws and after a botched experiment that mutilated her eyes she brutally killed herself in a bathtub at the clinic her ghost is bloody naked and carries the same knife she used to commit suicide. But in a way, she also is one of the most interesting ones because she has a lot of screen time, not just because she's naked, everybody, but like she has weird connections with Shannon Elizabeth, probably because Shannon Elizabeth is pretty. So there's a lot of like subtle hints that there's like a weird connection there. And if there was, you know, talks about expanding this into a Netflix series of 13 episodes where each ghost got their own, and that would be something to kind of dive into her seeing beautiful women and how she would interact with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah, young, that. beautiful women. So it's probably why she's more drawn to her than anybody yeah. else in the house. I guess I'm not safe there either. Oh, I know. Lance, you wanted to say something before I cut you off. I'm sorry. <laughs> I totally forgot. Let's be honest. <laughs> well, I guess it wasn't important. So next we have the Pilgrimess, uh, played by Xantha Radley. Isabella Smith came to North America as a colonist in order to find a new life after being an orphan in England. The tight-knit community ostracized and ignored her and used her as a scapegoat, being accused of witchcraft when crops and animals mysteriously died. She denied such accusations but was trapped in a burning barn but managed to escape unharmed. That sealed her fate and she died of starvation after being condemned to the pillory that she carries with her as a ghost. Her skin is badly damaged. Then we have next The Great Child, which The Great Child you'll see with the dire mother. So The Great Child, played by C. Ernst Harth, is about Harold Shelburne was a mentally disabled man who never outgrew diapers and had to be spoon-fed as a fully grown adult. That's I, was I was going to say <laughs> something about someone we know, but I won't do that. But I'm giving you all the look. Message received. So I know and you also, know who I'm talking about. <laughs> just because he didn't outgrow his diaper doesn't mean she had to put the little thing in his hair and dress him like an actual baby. <laughs> FYI, mother. Well, obviously, <laughs> she had Because now he problem. just looks like a fetish. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There is like something amiss with that. Um, but yes, he made his own. He made he often made baby sounds. And after being mocked, teased, and tormented relentlessly all his life, he caused a massacre at the old freak show where he and his mother, Margaret Shelburne, lived. Some of the freaks had kidnapped his mother as a joke one night, accidentally killing her in the process. The circus owner, Jimbo, had Harold mutilated beyond recognition. His ghost appears, as Harold did in life, with a small patch of hair, a bib covered in vomit, and cloth diapers. He still holds the axe that he used to kill his enemies. So we have the dire mother, played by Laurie Soper who is Margaret Shelburne, Harold's mother, and was a shy little lady standing three feet tall. She was assaulted by the tall man, another circus freak, and gave birth to her illegitimate son, Harold, whom she loved more than life itself. She smothered and spoiled him from infancy and never stopped as he grew. This is the main reason for the Harold's mental handicap. Now we get into the three, like, I guess, most violent ghosts. So the first being the hammer, played by Herbert Duncanson. 
A happy and honest, honest family man and blacksmith in the early 1890s, George Merkley was falsely accused of stealing by a higher up named Nathan and threatened with exile from their old western town. Knowing he was innocent, George stood up to Nathan and refused to leave. One day when George's family was walking home from the market, Nathan and his gang of thugs attacked and killed them brutally. Enraged, George took his blacksmith's hammer, tracked down Nathan and his friends, and beat them to death, but the townsfolk chained him to a tree outside his blacksmith's shop and drove railroad spikes into his body. His left hand was cut off, and his hammer was crudely attached to it. His ghost is one of the more angry spirits and is partially responsible for uh, one of the characters' death. <laughs> the jackal. So, I... Thought it was a woman? I always thought it was a woman until I read the synopsis like a couple of years ago. And I'm like, oh, it's a man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too. sorry. And I'm Pride Month and everything. No, I thought it was too. It, it looks like Reagan from The Exorcist. It's standing behind Mikey for those of you watching, if you're watching this online. Um, otherwise, just Google them. I'm sure you've seen them. You know who I'm talking about. He's the one with the, the cage over his head, his head. He's kind of like the main hair. baddie. Yeah, he he's probably the scariest visually. I think he's the scariest one. Am I? Yeah, opinion. and you see him more often than you saw anybody else, really. Other than the 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 one girl. Yeah, that's probably the, the two yeah. ones you saw the most of, like frequently, at least in whatever Final Cut we were watching. <laughs> so. Yeah, the angry princess shows up a lot. The the jackal shows up a lot. Um, and then like we see snippets of the other ones. That's why it's like I'm reading these and like I don't. Do I remember this one? Uh, like, I just yeah. watched this. The Jackal, we are uh, played by Shane Weiler. Um, the Jackal was born to a prostitute in 1887. Ryan Kahn developed a sick appetite for women, attacking and the R word to prostitutes in the night. Seeking to be cured of his insatiable appetite, Ryan voluntarily committed himself to Borehamwood Asylum for treatment. But after years of solitary confinement, Ryan went completely insane, scratching on the walls so violently his fingernails were torn completely off. In response, the doctors kept him permanently bound in a straitjacket, tying it tighter whenever he acted out, contorting his limbs. After gnawing through his straitjacket to get free, the doctors locked his head in a cage and sealed him away in a cell in the basement. While there, he developed a hatred of humanity, screaming madly and cowering whenever approached by people. When the asylum burst into flames, he chose to stay behind and perish in the fire while everyone else escaped. His ghost carries his torn straitjacket with a torn cubic head cage. It is called a sign of hell's winter. He is one of the most aggressive and violent ghosts, attacking and nearly killing Kathy before Kalina saves her. And then finally, we have the juggernaut. And I don't like his real name. I apologize to this actor in advance. But his real name is John DeSantis. <laughs> Shut up. Really? I'm so sorry. I mean, it, it, is could it, it be related? more on. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I hope love... not. <laughs> is, it, is, is, it, is, it, is it his dad? <laughs> I, I, you know what? I didn't even look. But honestly, I would take the juggernaut as my governor over, you know, what we have now. Yeah. So there's As that. a ghost. As a ghost. <laughs> as a murderous ghost. <laughs> <laughs> At least he doesn't discriminate. Exactly. Yeah, he, he's like you're all fucked. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So lastly, we have the juggernaut. Um, we have Horace Breaker Mahoney was born very disfigured and was an outcast his entire life. His mother abandoned him at a tender age, and his dad put him to work in the junkyard using his unusual strength to crush cars. After his dad died, Horace went insane. He would take motorists and hitchhikers, tear them apart with his bare hands, and feed the remains to his dogs. After several of these murders, he was arrested. At least he fed the dogs. A SWAT team yeah, shot. And... I know. I mean, he's not that bad. A SWAT team shot and killed him when he broke free of his handcuffs. As a ghost, he remained at the junk at the junkyard with his body riddled with bullet holes, killing intruders. Both Dennis and Cyrus remarked that his kill count outnumbered in the 40s, making his ghost one of the most evil and dangerous of the 12. But really, he just looks like Lurch. Um, yeah. And... <laughs> yeah, it really does. It really does. I do think the Jackal was the most frightening. It was like the big bad. This is where I kind of wish maybe, I don't know if it was more thought or maybe like an editing thing, or maybe they just didn't get footage that backed this up. But reading these and having access to these makes a lot more sense as to some of the things. Because yeah. when the Jackal attacked Shannon Elizabeth, that her titty flopping out was just let's give something for the boys but now it's like oh that's why 
Because it's very like focused on her breast when she's getting cut up and the boobs are, boom. I mean, they're in a bra, but like there's a lot of jiggleage and it pops out. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I, I appreciate a good pair of boobs um, just as much as everybody. But what's the reason? And I'm like, oh, okay. So he's a pervert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but mean, you only know that because we read this now. At the time, yeah. you're just like, oh, this just seems like you're just, okay, she, a, a boob grab. And she probably was like, hey, I'm not showing my tits in this. It was in one movie. Yeah. This is not going to be an ongoing thing for me to show my tits. I'll do it in a bra. Maybe she got paid more. I don't, I don't know. But at that point, you're thinking, oh, okay. That well, was weird. It, it wouldn't make sense, though, for her character to show her boobs in this movie because technically she's still a kid. Yeah. Right? yeah. She's, she's probably play, playing like a 16, 17 year old, right? And then the. Yeah. Still, I was going to say, still... she showed them in Jack Frost. I don't think she's that picky. No. Um, <laughs> that also brings up another thing that I had like just a minor issue with is I don't understand the relationship with Maggie the babysitter because she looks the same age as Shannon Elizabeth like yeah and if they're so broke how are they paying her yeah, yeah. and also like, that's Shannon the Elizabeth is the even if she was only 16 she's perfectly capable of watching her brother <laughs> like yeah I think they just needed to get another character into the movie but I don't I honestly feel like she was just kind of thrown in there for comedic relief really like that's what her character served I know that there's a lot of controversy about her character because I love her character I think honestly after this watch I was like I kind of wish we had more of her because she is funny but there's a lot of people that believe she is just like the token black character with like the comedic relief and the comebacks and the typical like witty banter and even like the end because there are some times where she says stuff that i'm like i don't think she would actually say that what's your favorite scariest ghost i think the juggernaut was kind of cool but it's only because you get to see him murder people in the beginning and honestly he's the only one that you really get his backstory watching it now it's like not a lot happens in this movie this movie takes place probably in like a span of two hours like they get to the house and then shit goes down like right away and mm -hmm. you know thinking about it, i was like i kind of thought it was more like a house in haunted hill where there was like some nights that went by like some hauntings but no it's like there's no build up right it's like they it. get to the house boom <laughs> the door closes shannon elizabeth's tops just ripped open like and then you know people are just being flung around split in half crushed and then it ends i yeah i like the fact though <laughs> that this this went pretty quickly because it is you know if, if you want to get into like a, a quick fun romp where there's something going on pretty much the entire film and it's entertaining it has good gore lots of good kills the ghosts are scary then yeah it is for what is that is it a deeply rooted film like he tries to tug on the heartstrings like the whole theme is family like stay close to your family and you know da 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 do i care no you could have killed the whole family i would have been fine with it so <laughs> <laughs> just, just let the nanny live <laughs> did you uh I, I thought like one of the coolest ones, I don't know if you, what you guys thought it was, because I mean, there were some awesome kills, but I thought the lawyer one was like probably one yeah. of the coolest, like all in all, like. <laughs> yeah, very Resident Evil, like. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. He leads up to my favorite line, which is when the babysitter goes, did the lawyer split? <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. And you know, and it's a good time. So if you haven't watched it yet, you're gonna have to pay to stream it now, but you know, just keep a look out for you know, Tubi or again, it's on HBO Max a lot, so I'm surprised it wasn't on there when I was going to watch it. But or you can just buy the I think, buy the damn movie. Yeah, and I think it pops up around Halloween time, honestly, on some streaming services. So maybe it'll show up here or there. Hey there, Looney Goons, and thanks for tuning in to today's video cast. As a reminder, you can catch the full review on your favorite podcast aggregator at Slashers Podcast. Also, every other Wednesday, keep an eye out for The Comic Chop, where we review new and old horror comics and all things nerdy, only available on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram at SlashersPod. Stay spooky!